In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the terms, terminology, definition, concepts, and acronyms that you'll encounter when you look at cloud computing. This will help you evaluate cloud computing offerings and make intelligent decisions about which offerings fit your business. As with almost any new technology, along comes new terminology that we want to learn. We have to be familiar with the new terminology for a few different reasons, but we want to make sure that we can understand the terminology as we look at evaluating and purchasing cloud services. There's two important terms and concepts that really underlie all of the rest. These are the idea of virtualization, decoupling services from hardware and one layer of service from another. And the other is the whole idea of as a service, which is often expressed as AAS following some other letter. This idea of a service is essential to the cloud computing model. The idea that you're not buying hardware, you're not even really buying a contract, you're buying a service, you're buying something that's delivered to your users, whether those are internal users or public users. So it's important to understand this service concept. Specifically, virtualization. It means separating hardware from software. The idea that we used to have things tightly coupled to specific hardware has gone away in the age of virtualization. In fact, we don't often need the hardware at all. Hardware functions are emulated in software. Now, when I say we don't need the hardware, obviously there's hardware somewhere. There's actually a processor that's running, but we don't really care what that processor is or where it's located because we're making the software and services portable. We're making them able to be moved around. Various forms of virtualization have been around for quite some time. For example, originally, if you had an application running, whether it was under Windows or not, that application talked specifically and directly to a printer. Well, nowadays, the application talks to an application programming interface or API in Windows. Windows talks to the print driver. The print driver then talks to the printer. In other words, the application doesn't particularly care what type of printer is at the other end. It's more generic. It's more portable. This is a level of virtualization that's been around for many, many years. Well, it's going further and more pervasive. There are more and more places where we can decouple or remove those two things, and we can emulate things and we can make services portable. In the context of the cloud, the idea of virtualization centers on the idea that your service or software can be moved where you need it, and it can be started and stopped on demand without tying it particularly to hardware, to any one brand of hardware, to any one location of hardware. It's virtual. Yes, it runs on hardware, but you don't need to concern yourself about where that hardware is or to a large degree, what type of hardware it is. I mentioned the cloud. So let's talk about what the cloud is and what is cloud computing. The idea of cloud computing is an IT infrastructure that generally shares some or all of the following traits. The infrastructure is accessed remotely, often over a public carrier, such as the internet. It's scalable, and other words that are sometimes used by providers are words like elastic or even fungible. The idea that it can grow and shrink on demand. You can have the services that you need when you need them. Now, of course, you're going to pay for those services. So it's usually a pay-as-you-go model. It's metered or pay-for-use or pay-on-demand. Generally, it's provisioned very quickly or even instantly, and often self-service, usually through some kind of web portal. So you say, I want to change my instance type or I want more resources. You click a few buttons in your control panel, and it's done and goes into effect immediately. There's two types of cloud. Public cloud. Public cloud is purchased from a provider on demand. You're one of many clients. And there are several such providers. Many of them are very large, including Microsoft, Amazon Web Services, IBM, and several others. A private cloud, on the other hand, is maintained either by an internal IT department or a contractor for the exclusive use of your organization. Now, there's also kind of the third model, sometimes called a hybrid cloud, which combines elements of these two things. Certain elements, certain features, certain services are in the public cloud, and others are exclusively maintained in your own data center. Now, the idea of things being as a service or AAS. In a 
service-oriented model. You're paying for the results or the service. You're not paying for hardware. An example that has nothing to do with computers is, would you rather take a taxi or buy a car? If you take a taxi, you're paying for that service. Your goal is to get from point A to point B. You can buy taxis as often or as rarely as you like. If you, on the other hand, commit to owning a car, you have to deal with that hardware. You have to deal with maintaining it. And you have a certain capital expense that you're locked into regardless of how you use the car. Thus, one of the advantages of as a service in many organizations is moving the cost from a capital expenditure to an operational expenditure. And depending on the structure of your business, that may be easier to budget for or may be more palatable to your organization. But the biggest advantage is that the equipment provision to supply your service can grow as your service grows. Going back to our taxi example, if you have more and more people that need to get from one place to another, you can call the taxi company and say, send a larger car, send a limo, or send an entire bus. With you have a purchased vehicle, you of course have a lot more at stake when you look at upgrading that vehicle to a larger capacity. So this is one area where our little analogy holds true. Now, when it comes to what's being offered as a service, there's a number of acronyms available. The first is SaaS, or Software as a Service, sometimes pronounced SaaS. This is the idea of cloud-based applications, usually web-based applications, that run on servers located in that cloud. These servers are owned and managed by someone else, a cloud provider in the case of a public cloud, or a central IT group in the case of a private cloud. Examples of software as a service, you've probably used a web-based mail service like Hotmail or Gmail. These are both software that is being run on the cloud in a web-based environment. The next step is PaaS or Platform as a Service. Now there's some debate about what's included in the platform, so if you're looking to purchase one of these, you need to understand exactly what the provider considers part of the platform. In its purest sense, platform as a service includes everything required to create, maintain, and eventually retire cloud-based applications. That means it may include development applications or portals that allow for click-to-create applications. Infrastructure as a service, or IaaS, takes the idea and goes beyond the application, goes beyond the development tools, and moves all of the network infrastructure that was required for providing that service into the cloud. Infrastructure as a service may include things like DNS, the domain name system, routers or virtual routers, virtual private networks and virtual LANs, storage being provisioned in the cloud, or complete operating systems. So the idea is you don't need to have anything located on your environment, on your premises, everything can be in the cloud. And then we have the idea of X as a service. X as in that unknown variable in algebra. In other words, anything. Now in keeping with trendy talk, sometimes this is pronounced ZAS or ZAS, but it's the idea of being able to virtualize or serviceify anything. So anything that's traditionally offered locally, somebody will try and find a way to virtualize an offer in the cloud. Now, some of these are common and some of these are rare. But the most obvious is the SPI model, which is software as a service along with platform as a service and infrastructure as a service. You also see storage as a service, and sometimes they use the same acronym. So that's the idea of provisioning cloud storage to hold your data up there. Communications as a service, I know of companies that are actually running IP-based PBXs for their phones in the cloud. Networking as a service, and monitoring as a service. So there's really all kinds of things that can be offered as a service or moved to the cloud. Another term that you should be very aware of is the idea of an SLA, or a service level agreement. You'll see this term bantied about. An SLA at its simplest level defines, by contract, what standards are going to be met by the provider and what, if any, recompense is available to you if they don't meet that standard. Even on an internal private cloud, SLAs are useful because they define what the expectation is. And certainly when you're paying money for a service, it makes it very clear what you expect. I believe that 
every contract for a service should include a service level agreement of some sort. And I believe it's key to understanding and comparing the offerings of different providers.